for the Tadis Irish 1,000 guineas over a mile and going forward in the early part none too keen to go obviously forward but no speak Alexander might just take them along through the early part and Joan of Arc is right up with the early pace but it's no speak Alexander just comes across slightly Fev Rover there also prominent a sense of style Miss Amulet is prominent pretty gorgeous the one the racing on the right of your screen in isolation but it's no speak Alexander with Joan of Arc racing in second close behind them is sense of style Miss Amulet's over on the near side of Zafi's pride pretty gorgeous has no cover on the inside fantasy lady just behind them is friendly and bell magic towards the back is sweet gardenia last of all is Ziggit. but it's no speak alexander joan of arc zafi's pride up on the outside fev rovers just not getting a clear run and this one's inside is thinking of you and right behind thinking of you is the orange jacket of fantasy lady also in that behind sense of style fev rovers and the sheepskin noseman just outside this one is pretty gorgeous and they're being chased on the outside by empress josephine who's been tracked down by sweet gardenia miss amulets in the black with the white disc so they're racing now to make their way well past halfway and towards the three and it's no speak Alexander and Shane Foley from on the outside Joan of Arc and Ryan Moore and just outside them Zafi's Pride and Tom Madden the one two three pretty gorgeous is just outside them and ridden along now Empress Josephine runs around a little on the outside of Fev Rover just ahead of this one is Sense of Style it's no speak Alexander from Joan of Arc trying to pick up is Zafi's Pride pretty gorgeous waits for her effort late then on the outside Empress Josephine Bell Magic is next no speak Alexander taken on now by Joan of Arc pretty gorgeous has to pick up now it's Joan of Arc with no speak Alexander they're not coming from behind trying to get there is Empress Josephine but these two are clear now it's Joan of Arc on the near side no speak Alexander they've had a battle since the stalls opened Empress Josephine has now got into top gear it's Joan of Arc Empress Josephine is flying home on the near side Empress Josephine and Joan of Arc Joan of Arc may just have held on from a fast finishing Empress Josephine Bell Magic finished fast so did Fantasy Lady no speak Alexander was game and then just behind them pretty gorgeous didn't pick up sense of style was next friendly was in there too with Ziggit and then right back to Fev Rover who got no clear run. Sweet Gardenia was next with Miss Amulet towards the back. But it was very, very close. It looked as though the front pair, No Speak Alexander and Joan of Arc, were going to see it out. And on the near side, Empress Josephine and Shamie Heffernan tries to get to Joan of Arc over on the far side. She's in front there, but that's where it counts. Oh, that's even closer than the last group one. It's Aidan O'Brien has had a winner at Guinea's Weekend. On that still, you'd have to say Shamie Heffernan has followed up last year's success. But that could be a little bit deceptive. Don't think so. It looks like he got it there. I think Jamie got it there, did he? I well, it all depends on where our camera is. The photo finishes on our shot. Jamie has got there. Yeah. But we're not the judge. It we're often, not on the line. It often pays to favour the closer, but at this stage, you were thinking it was going to be between no speak Alexander and Joan of Arc but where is Shamie Heffernan in the navy colours down the outside the outside is a favourite pretty gorgeous who just levels off and fails to pick up Bell Images run a huge race for Robbie Colgan and Sheila Lavery from off the pace just behind Seamus there in the red and black colours but at this stage you thought it was developing in between a duel between the front two but the, the, the horse down the outside start to gather a head of, head of steam yeah, Shane, Shane Foley has made the running down the inside. You can see it in the white and navy uh, quartered cap. And Joan of Arc has sit, sat with him in the, in the purple cap all the way. It looked like they had the two of them had it between it, had it between them. Uh, Shamie Heffernan, I thought, would ride. He's really, really, really forward in, in the navy, uh, stepping back in trip. But he's taken a little lead, followed pretty gorgeous into the race, and he's rattled home late. And we're just waiting on the judge to see if he's got all the money or just some of the money. I'd say by the way Shamie is there, He's confident he's at one, or he would have disappeared away from Katie. And uh, just. Here we go. Here we are. Yes. Empress Shamie Josephine has, has done it. Two guineas in a row for. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, Jamie's up. We couldn't go through a guineas weekend at the Curl without Aidan O'Brien getting his name he's on back. the board. He's back. He's back. He's, back. he's, he's gone back. here for a day. You wrote him off too quickly, Ted. <laughs> Eat your words now. He's back. He's back. <laughs> Great oh. finish, super race, and uh, Shamie Heffernan is with Katie Walsh. Shamie, that uh, was tight anyway, but it was a great result, and I'm sure you're... Did you thought you were there, did you, I in thought, our conversation I thought, beforehand? I, I thought I'd got there. Yeah. Um, I had a willing partner. I should have won well. I got, a, I got met on side, sideways two down, and it knocked it off for balance. I was a lucky winner, but I should have won well. It was a funny, I don't mean it was a funny race, but it was well ridden from the front because they didn't go a mad gallop and it got quite chock-a-block in behind for a lot of lads. What kind of a passage through did you have? Um, I was ha happy enough who, who, who I was following. I thought the filly that with the highest rating to take me there. Irish racing is always tactical. If you don't have a horse that can jump and travel in the first four, you're on the back foot. It's, Irish racing has gone very like French racing. 
Do you think it's getting more like that, Jimmy? Um, it's been like that a while. Um, it's, it's just the way racing is. Uh, sometimes you ride a mile and a half horse in a mile and a half race, but they don't go a mile and a half pace. That's just the way it panned out. Anyway, listen, um, <laughs> I read too much into things. I'm delighted to be on this one. It's my fifth. It's my fifth. Um, Guineas. Fifth Guineas. Uh, I, I won her race on similar conditions and she's very well bred and I'm delighted to be on the winner. Straightforward though, isn't she? Like very uncomplicated, it makes the job a little bit easier. Yeah, Shane that rides her out. She can be a little bit hot and jig joggy at home. Shane that rides her out has done a good job. He, he, to he told me she was the best filly in the race. All I needed was a bit of looks. Well, Listen, it was grand to get it. Well, you, you got that and you're certainly not losing your enthusiasm for the game meters, Jamie. Are you absolutely loving it? I'm as hungry as ever. Hungry me. as hell. Well done. Thanks. Well done, lads. Thank you. Well done. Aidan O'Brien joins me. That was close. Not as close as we thought initially. It's a good bit of a, a, a quarter paint, Aidan O'Brien. Yeah, no, thanks, uh, Brian. She's lovely filly. She's a sister. She's, you know, her sister, you know, so she's sister to mine thing, you know, so the other filly is sister to Glen Eagle. So, um, no, and she, she won her maiden lovely first time as uh, Nace, and then she went to a trial at Leperstown, maybe where they all, they all went a little bit too quick, so it was a bit of a non-event for her. She went back to Gorn over nine furlongs and had a lovely run, just beaten, and back to a mile, she was very happy. It wasn't wasn't a fast pace today, so she was able to quicken. So I know it was lovely, Brian. Jamie felt when talking to Katie that he would have been an unlucky loser if he didn't get there. Ah, yeah, listen, sure, I suppose there's winners and losers every day and there's people unlucky and lucky, you know what I mean? So it falls away some days, some days it doesn't, but uh, Seamus on the day gave her a great ride. Yes, your tent, I think, uh, 1,000 guineas. Uh, well, she obviously, she looks, uh, come back here for the Irish Oaks, or was she, is she in a depth? Yeah, I don't think she, no, she, I, I, I I, I don't think she's going to stay, Brian. Maybe a mile is her trip, you, you know what I mean? Maybe a mile and a quarter, maybe held up, you know? So, But we, we'll see. Uh, she's not slow, um, but uh, we'll see. She could be a filly for the French Oaks or a Carnation, probably see what the lads want to do because they have Mother Earth as well for the Carnation. So it'll be really whatever the lads decide. And the second filly won a good race as well? L lovely. We were going to step her up after today. She was going to probably go up to a French Oaks after this, so we'll see how just she Just while I have, we have just 30 more seconds before Shamey comes in. Just talk to RT viewers about your thoughts now, 13 days ahead of the of the Epsom Derby. No, everything going good so far. All the This week is a big week now. Our next week is a big week for the Derby horses. So they'll be in full swing and, they, and they'll be starting to feel a bit of, bit of pressure next week, you know, so and then and then at the end of the week hopefully we'll know what's there and what, what way they all so are. So it's right? Ballet and High Definition are your primary two? Ah, yes, you listen, but Balchai Barry was very impressive the last day and and, uh, and the other horse was just came back after his run, so when he steps into full work now.